Hi, my name is Beth Massey, and welcome to the Windows Forms over Data video series. In this second video, we're going to create an application and connect it to an existing database, the one we created in the first video. We're then going to define how the application should retrieve and update our data. So first, let's create a new Windows Forms application. I've got Visual Studio open here, and from the Start page, we can click Create Project. I'm going to select a Visual Basic Windows application, and I'm going to name it Order Manager. This will set up our project with one form. We're going to use the Data Sources window to connect to our data. So from the main menu, select Data, Show Data Sources. We don't have any data sources defined yet, so we get this link in the window, Add New Data Source. So we select this, or we can just click here, Add New Data Source. So we're going to get our data from the database, and we need to create a new connection to that database. So the name of our database is Local SQL Express. And the name of the database we created in the first video is called OMS. We can test our connection. Succeeded. Click OK. If we're interested in what the connection string is, we can expand this area and it will show it here. Next, it asks us if we want to save this connection string into the application configuration file. So storing these connection strings in the application configuration file really eases the management and deployment of when you change your database location, the string is in one place in your application. So yes, we want to save the connection as OMS connection string. So now it's retrieving our database objects. If we take a look here, we can expand the tables area and we'll see all the tables that we defined. What we select can be a subset of our data tables in the database. This subset of data is called a data set. We can also specify a name down here. We use data sets in our applications to communicate retrieval and update of data to and from the database. So for this example, let's select customer and we'll call it customer data set. So what the designer did was it generated a customer data set that we can see in our data sources window here. We can expand the table and we can see all of the fields. So let's quickly test this out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag our customer table onto our form. You'll notice that this creates some components for us when we do this. This includes the binding navigator, which lets us scroll through the records in our table, add, delete, and update our data. So let me like th make this look a little bit better. I'm going to dock and parent container, and we're going to edit the columns in our data grid view. I'm going to remove modified, and everything else looks good. Okay, and let's make the form a little bit bigger. Okay. Okay, so let's test this by running it. Hit F5. And it pulls up two rows that are in our database. Those are the only rows we have in there. So let's make some changes. And let's add something new. And we'll try to press save. Looks like they updated. Just to be sure, I always like to retest. It'll pull up all the rows that we have in the database again, and this time you can see our changes really did go through. Great. So we can also test out deletes. Looks like those work great. So now what if we already have insert, update, and delete stored procedures defined on our database? How can we use those? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the Server Explorer so we can take a look at our database. And you'll see that we've defined some stored procedures, delete customer, insert customer, and update customer. So we created these stored procedures in the first video. And the reason why we did that is because we have some additional security requirements on our table here. We don't want to allow the connections to be able to issue delete, insert, or update statements directly. All we want to allow is select and execute permissions. There's other reasons why you might want to have stored procedures in your database. You might be creating high throughput applications, for instance, or maybe you just want to improve manageability across several applications that use the same queries, like in an enterprise. So in order to use these stored procedures, we're going to need to get at the data set. So 
I'm opening up the Solution Explorer here and let's pin the property sheet as well and you'll see customer data set here in, in the list of my files. I'm going to double click on that and that'll open up the data set designer. Here you can see our data table customer and a customer table adapter. The customer table adapter is responsible for sending delete, insert, and update statements to the database and also for selecting the data from the database. So we can modify how the customer table adapter works. So what I'm going to do to modify how it works is we're going to go into the property sheet and let's expand it a little bit bigger here. And you'll see in the data section here the delete command, insert command, select command, and update command the table adapter can use. So we're going to modify the delete the insert and the update statements. So first we're going to select new and then we're going to expand and select stored procedure as the command type. The next thing is we're going to select the command text and that will be delete customer. When we select the command text the stored procedure delete customer it automatically populates some things into the parameter collection for us. So I'm going to click on parameters and you'll see that it's got the return value, all stored procedures return a value, and a customer ID. So all we need to do now is map this parameter into the source column in our data table here in this data set designer. So that would be customer ID. So that means it's going to send the customer ID column here in the customer data table to the stored procedure. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is do the same idea to the insert command. You'll notice, by the way, that these insert commands are here. They're generated by the data set designer when we first created it. And you could modify these queries. You'll notice that this is an insert statement. However, we want to use the stored procedure. So I'm going to select new and stored procedure. And then I'm going to select the command text is insert. And that will again populate all of the parameters for us and you'll again notice that we'll have to go through here and select our source columns so first source column is last name first name address city state zip and our customer ID and the timestamp modified. Okay. And finally, our update command. So we're going to select new, store procedure, update customer, and the same idea here. last name, first name, address, city, state, zip, customer ID, and modify. So we went over how to design these stored procedures in the first video. So all we want to do now is map those stored procedures we created to our, how our table adapter is going to update the data. So now we've specified all of the parameters correctly in source columns. This should work exactly the same as it did before, except now it's going to be using the stored procedures. So I'm going to hit F5. And it brings up our two rows. So I'm going to add one last name and we're going to remove one and we're going to edit one. Now when I press save it'll use our stored procedures. Great it looked like it worked. Just to be sure let's run it one more time and yep those are our two rows. Cool. So that's how we connect to our database. We use the data sources window to create data sets that we can use on our forms. And the data sets connect to the database through table adapters. And we can customize these table adapters to do exactly what we want.
So I'd like to thank you for your time. If you'd like to check out the Visual Basic Developer Center, we'll be posting updates to these videos there. Please also check out the Visual Basic team blog and my blog for more information. Thanks again.